Chair recognizes the gentleman from Virginia, Mr. Forbes, for five minutes. Mr. Chairman, thank you. Mr. Rector, thank you so much for being here today. And let's just cut to the chase. The president is not enforcing uh, the immigration laws because any time you issue an order for the massive, unilateral, non-prosecution of individuals who are breaking the law, that's by definition not enforcing the law. And, and what bothers me even more than that, because I recognize there's some people in this committee don't want him to enforce the law, other people that want him to enforce the law. But when we have the head of the ICE agents unions sitting in the chair right beside you and the head of the border agents union 12,500 people who unlike you have been on the job much longer than three weeks who have conducted literally thousands of interviews with these individuals coming across the border and they say unequivocally that the reason we're having this crisis is because of the president's policies and they've told the president that through their agents that's what concerns this committee but one of the other concerns we have is this. They're concerned about gang members that are being released and coming through because their efforts are being taken somewhere else. So I want to ask you this. In that probing interrogation that you talked about earlier that you were so impressed with, if during the background check or other information uh, that's uncovered during the review of a request for deferred action, an individual's presence in the United States threatens the public safety or national security, is it not true that that individual will not be able to receive deferred action? That, that is correct. All right. Do you, uh, does gang membership qualify as a threat to public safety or national security? Without a doubt. Um, does former gang membership qualify? Um, uh, in general, yes, former gang membership would also be a potentially disqualifying... If an individual renounces to their membership in a violent criminal gang, are they eligible for asylum or withholding from removal, or are they continuing to be recognized as a potential public safety or national security threat? Uh, generally, uh, they would be seen as a threat. Uh, and denied a benefit, but again, these things depend on facts and circumstances. Well, I'm talking about your gen so so then you you, you your testimony earlier was that if they were a member of a gang, then they would be viewed as a public safety. That is correct. If they threat. are a current member of a gang, then they would be denied. All right, and my question is this. How do you know? I don't think they have ID badges or membership cards that they have. If it comes up that they have, are you asking asking them in the interview if they were ever a member of a gang? Yeah, uh, among the things that I've prosecuted in, in the past is uh, organized crime, uh, specifically. I got all that. I, I just want to yeah. know. I don't question. Oh, no, no, but I want to. I want to tell you about my ability to judge what I'm seeing. No, no, I, I, I appreciate that. What I want to know is what your agency is doing in their interviews. Are they asking the question, "Are you a gang member or are you not a gang member?" When they're doing these interviews, the agency through the Fraud Detection and National Security Directorate is doing a robust series of checks. Uh, to determine whether an individual has a are they asking the history. individuals if they've ever been a member of a violent criminal gang? Um, I I am not able to speak to that specific. See, that's question. what just absolutely frightens me when you come in here and you can uh, uh, testify about the broad, comprehensive nature we need to review and change this process, when that's asked to you by the other side of the aisle. But when we ask you a simple question on the fact that you have testified that gang membership constitutes a public safety or national security threat, and we don't even know if we're asking that question, that gives me pause for concern. If you don't know if we're asking the question, do you know what an individual would have to do to renounce that gang membership? Do they just have to say, I'm no longer a member? Uh, Congressman, I'm, I'm looking into those issues right now. Uh, I'm, it is my understanding that we have generally been very effective uh, at screening out individuals who pose some sort of national security or criminal justice threat. You know, Mr. Director, I, I don't want to be harsh on you. It's just, can you understand why the American people are so frustrated with this administration? When you come in here and you say gang membership is a threat to national security, it's a threat to public safety, and you as the director don't even know on the interviews if you're asking the question if they were a member of a gang, and you don't know that whether or not they can just say, oh, yes, I was a member, but I'm no longer a member. That is concerning, and, and I'll well, punish by this, and then I'll let you respond. When the border agents who are having to do this are telling us they're worried 
because we're letting gang members in the country, and then we find you don't even know if we're asking that question, that's a big concern to us, and I'll let you respond because my time's up. Sure. Out. What I do know is where we do have uh, cause to believe that an individual has been... In cause, uh, the question, it'll be asked every single time in every interview, if you think it's a public threat and a national security issue, which you testified it was. And to say you're, if you have cause, if somebody shows up and they make the allegation, you ought to be at least asking that question if the border agents are saying this is a big concern. And with that, Mr. Chairman, I yield back with a great deal of frustration. The uh, chair thanks the gentleman and recognizes the gentleman from Illinois, Mr. Gutierrez, for five minutes. Thank you, Mr.